Good afternoon. My name is Anton Lektarov. I'm one of the engineers at Facebook. I work on caching infrastructure. And today I'm going to talk about MacRouter. So MacRouter is a memcache protocol router for scaling memcache D deployments. It was developed at Facebook over the last two years and it's been recently open sourced. And uh, the purpose of this talk is to give you a brief overview of what MacRouter is and to hopefully motivate you to try it out for yourself. Um, we believe this piece of software would be useful to anyone who has to run multiple memcached instances. So before we get into the details of what it is, I'm going to give you a high level view of caching at Facebook. So here we see a typical image uh, that you might see on your mobile phone. So just a post with a picture and some comments. And on the right is, uh, is something we call the social graph. So there are some user objects with friend associations between them. And the social graph contains more than just users, it also contains objects. So for example, there is a post object, a post has a photo attached to it, and there are many more objects and associations, like comments, likes, location, and so on. So as you can see, this, that's a lot of small pieces of data we have to fetch over and over. So that's what makes caching important. So the web server will fetch this data from the cache and dynamically construct the picture that you see on the site. Uh, caching at Facebook takes on two different forms. So first one is the demand field look aside cache stored by memcache. So in this model first we try to fetch data from the cache. So if it's present there then we're done. If not then we go to do the database lookup. And finally, we set the key to memcache for later. And the second model is a read-through, write-through cache served by the Tau system. So in this model, we try to fetch the data from the cache. And if it's not in the cache, then the system does a database lookup on the client's behalf. And it's important to note that we actually use the same memcache protocol for the system to leverage our existing client libraries. Uh, so what's common across both of the systems is that every single cache query at Facebook goes through MacRouter and uh, using the memcache protocol. Uh, we typically see two orders of magnitude more reads than writes, so most of the requests can actually serve can be served from the cache. And in terms of numbers, at Facebook we see almost five billion cache operations per second at peak. So next is Instagram. So Instagram uses a very similar demand field look aside cache setup that we talked about before with uh, one key difference. So last year when Instagram was still hosted in Amazon EC2, they were using a public memcached instance as opposed to our internal memcache fork. And uh, they still adopted MacRouter in this setup and were able to greatly improve uh, cache reliability. So this shows you that MacRouter is proving to work outside of Facebook's environment. And uh, Instagram does over 100 million cache operations per second. So what was it like before MacRouter? So we have our PHP application logic. We had the simple key value API. And then we needed to add a bunch of features to the stack. And so we started adding consistent hashing, server pools, in-cast congestion control, automatic failure detection, and so on and so on. So this stack got really bloated really quickly. And at the same time, we have all these other services not written in PHP. We have C++ services, Java services, Python tools, and uh, all of them kind of had to fend for themselves if they wanted to talk to cache. And the problem here is that inconsistent implementations can lead to corrupt data. So this was obviously a bad situation to be in. Enter MacRouter. So MacRouter is a memcache protocol router that manages client to cache communication. So it sits between the client and the cache. It acts as a proxy and does uh, all the cache requests on the client's behalf. So this way the client can be really thin and we can offload all the actual routing logic to MacRouter. So now I'm gonna give you a brief uh, overview of some of MacRouter's features. And the important thing to note is that all of these features are motivated by 
actual production requirements of Facebook and Instagram. So as a result, they are robust and of production quality. Uh, Macrowder has features like consistent hashing, connection pooling, workload specific pools, automatic failover, and many more. Uh, we have a detailed introduction on our GitHub wiki, so I encourage you to take a look. But in this talk, I'm gonna focus on just a few of these features. So the first one is connection pools. So as, as your site continues to grow, one of the problems you can face is that there's gonna be too many inbound TCP connections on the cache servers. So here we have N application servers, and each server has T application threads. So if you do it the naive way, every server gonna be gonna have on the order of N times T connections. And that can be a lot, especially as your application scales to hundreds of threads per server. So the solution is we put Macrowd as a proxy on every application server and allow sharing this single connection to the cache server. And this brings a number of connections from N times T to order N. Another common problem is transient failures. So in large scale infrastructure, network and servers will fail all the time. And we need to have a way to handle this in a robust way. So when Macrado detects that the server is unavailable, either via a timeout or a network error, it can automatically fail over the request to uh, another destination which can actually handle the traffic. And uh, only the first request will have to pay the timeout penalty. Like the future request will not have any extra latency. At the same time, we s keep sending periodic health check probes in the background. So when a probes com probe comes, comes back successfully, McCrowder detects that the original server is back up and everything comes back to normal. So in the event of network outage, it's as simple as waiting for network to be back up for everything to recover. At Facebook, we leverage deletes to keep the site consistent. Um, what McCrowder will actually do in this case, it will log the deletes to disk so that when the server comes back, back up, we can replay those deletes to keep everything consistent. This is a very important feature for our setup. And to offer further evidence of McCrowder's failure handling capabilities, here's a quote from Rick Branson, an Instagram engineer. One of the primary reasons we switched to McCrowder at Instagram is that it has much more robust failure handling than Twemproxy did. Okay, so let's dive into how you would actually set it up. So we have a simple example. So we want to have two servers, one of them as a normal destination, one of them as a backup. And we want to send, send all GET requests to the normal destination and fail over to the backup. At the same time, we want to send all sets and deletes to both of them simultaneously so that the backup has the data. And uh, this is the complete setup. You need to get it up and running. So on the left is a JSON config, and on the right is a command line you would run it with. And there are two parts to the config. The first part is a pool definition. So here we def define two pools with one server each. And the second part is a routing config. So you can think of it as defining a tree of built-in route modules or route handles as they call them. And each route handle has uh, some simple built-in logic. So here we chose the prefix policy route handle as the root. And what it allows us to do is to do different operations depending on the operation type. So for operations, for get operations, we want to send it down to the failover route handle. And the failover route handle will send everything to the normal destination unless it's down, in which case it will fail over to the failover destination. And this default part basically say, say send all requests which are not gets to this all sync route. And all sync route means replicate across all of the targets. So send all sets and deletes to both of the pools. 
So McCrowder has many more of these uh, predefined route handles which can be combined in arbitrary ways. So it's really flexible and allows for a wide range of cache setups. So another feature is online reconfiguration. So in a live production system, you need to swap in and out cache servers and change the routing configuration from time to time. Uh, Macrado will actually monitor any changes to configuration file and automatically reload it in the background. So again, there is no latency impact on the request. As soon as the new configuration is ready to use, it's atomically swapped and the new request will be routed accordingly. There is a side benefit to this. If the new configuration is somehow invalid, Macrado will actually keep using the old configuration. And this has actually saved us in the past. And for convenience, Macrado also supports splitting up the config into different parts. So for example, you might want to separate state configuration like lists of servers which could be updated by script automatically from a routing configuration which could be updated by human manually. And Macrado will automatically track all of the configuration files. Okay. So next we talk about heterogeneous workloads. And the problem here is that keys compete for memory space. Uh, one example is imagine you have two data sets. Uh, one of them is updated every day and the other updated every week. And if they share the same cache servers, what you'll see is the more frequently updated data set will tend to crowd out the less frequently updated one. And the performance will suffer as a result. So our solution to this is to simply divide different workloads into pools. And the way we do it is by looking at the prefix of the key. So here, every key starts starting with letters A, B, C will be sent to the ABC pool, and similarly for XYZ keys. And all other keys will be sent to the default wildcard pool. And again, here's how you would set it up. So now we have three different pools with two servers in each. And another feature here is that when you specify more than one server per pool, Macrado will automatically use consistent hashing within each pool. So you can easily add or remove servers as necessary. And the route we want to use this time is the prefix selector route. So here we define the prefixes for ABC and XYZ keys as well as the wildcard prefix. There are two modes of operation. So the first one is a simple proxy mode. You can think of it as a drop-in proxy. There's a memcached server interface. So if your client can talk to memcached, it can talk to Macrowder instead. And the second mode is the embedded mode for low latency, high performance applications. So we use the second mode for most applications inside Facebook. So this evolutionary path from caches coming from going from an optimization on the side to becoming a production requirement is something that you'll see in many sites. Um, outages of the cache can cause downtime, so it's important that we handle them in a good way. And mechanism a Crowder provide, provides are not Facebook specific. So Instagram adopted Macrowder and Amazon EC2 last year. And many companies will follow a similar trajectory. So I invite you to try out Macrowder for yourself. We have detailed instructions how to set it up on our GitHub wiki. And uh, we also have a Facebook group for any discussion and support. So that concludes my talk. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> thank you. Is okay. The question was: Is Macrowder a single point of failure? And um, we actually have uh, set up where we have several Macrowders in series. So we have a tier of Macrowders to load balance, basically, and then they, they can connect, connect to other Macrowders. So you can definitely set it up in a way that is not a single point of failure. Uh, yeah. How much overhead? Okay, the question is how much overhead does it have? 
It's uh, difficult to answer in generic general terms. I'm gonna say on our hardware, on typical load, we see about 100 microseconds extra latency per request. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the question is how many of those features got moved into MacRouter? Uh, pretty much all of them are in MacRouter by now. So the intention was like for every server to be able to make use, use of those features and nowadays they can. <laughs> 